This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at standard electrode potentials. So let's start with a definition. The standard electrode potential is the electrode potential of a half cell measured under standard conditions relative to the SHE. The SHE is the standard hydrogen electrode, which we can see on the left. The SHE is assigned a value of zero volts. The electrode potentials of other half cells are measured relative to the SHE. So next we look at the conditions of the SHE. Hydrogen gas at a pressure of 100 kPa. A solution of hydronium ions with a concentration of 1 mole per cubic decimeter. An inert platinum electrode. And a temperature of 298 K. And as we saw in the previous slide, the SHE is assigned an electrode potential of 0 volts. Here we can see the half equation for the reaction that takes place in the SHE. Either hydrogen ions are reduced to form hydrogen gas, or hydrogen gas is oxidized to form hydrogen ions. So next, we look at how the SHE is used to measure standard electrode potentials. To measure the standard electrode potential of a half cell, it is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode. In this diagram, we have a zinc half cell connected to the SHE via an external circuit and a salt bridge. The reading on the voltmeter shows 0.76 volts. If we look at the direction of the electron flow, we can see they are moving from the zinc half cell to the standard hydrogen electrode. This tells us that the zinc half cell is the anode and the SHE is the cathode. Here we have the half equations for the reactions that take place at the anode and the cathode. As we can see in the zinc half cell, the zinc electrode is being oxidized and in the SHE, hydrogen ions are being reduced. This reaction takes place because zinc is a stronger reducing agent and therefore has a greater tendency to undergo oxidation. So next, we look at how to calculate the standard electropotential of the zinc half cell. So here we have the equation that can be used to calculate the cell potential of a voltaic cell, which can also be used to calculate the standard electropotential of a half cell. So the cell potential is equal to the standard electropotential of the half cell that undergoes reduction, minus the standard electropotential of the half cell that undergoes oxidation. So in our previous example, the cell potential was 0.76 volts. The SHE, which is assigned an electropotential of 0 volts, underwent reduction, and the zinc half cell underwent oxidation. So from this, we can calculate the standard electropotential of the zinc half cell, which is negative 0.76 volts. The negative sign tells us that the zinc half cell will undergo oxidation when connected to the standard hydrogen electrode. In other words, it will be the anode. In our next example, we'll determine the standard electropotential of a copper half cell. So in this diagram, we have a copper half cell connected to an SHE. The reading on the voltmeter shows 0.34 volts. If we look at the direction of the electron flow, we can see that this time, the electrons are flowing from the SHE to the copper half cell. From this, we can determine that the SHE is the anode and the copper half cell is the cathode. And here we have the two half equations for the reactions that take place in each half cell. From these equations, we can see that copper ions are being reduced in the copper half cell and hydrogen gas is being oxidized in the SHE. This reaction occurs because copper ions are a weaker reducing agent than hydrogen gas and therefore have a greater tendency to undergo reduction. So next we look at how to calculate the standard electropotential of the copper half cell. So once again, we will use the same equation used in the previous example. The cell potential for the second example was positive 0.34 volts. The copper half cell underwent reduction and the SHE underwent oxidation. So from this, we get a standard electropotential for the copper half cell of positive 0.34 volts. The positive sign tells us that when connected to an SHE, the copper half cell will be the cathode. We'll end the video by looking at a table of selected standard electropotential values. The first point to note is that these are written for the reduction reactions. We can also see that the more negative values are at the top of the table, and as we go down the table, the values get less negative or more positive. 
So in this table, these range from negative 3.04 to positive 2.87. The more positive the value, the more readily the half reaction occurs. And the more negative the value, the less readily the half equation occurs. This tells us that fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent in the table. And the lithium ion with the most negative value is the weakest oxidizing agent. In terms of strength as reducing agents, the lithium atom is the strongest, which means it has a greater tendency to undergo oxidation. The fluoride ion is the weakest reducing agent, which means it has the lowest tendency to undergo oxidation. In terms of the half cells in a voltaic cell, we can make the following generalizations. The half cell with the more negative standard electropotential value will be the anode. And the half cell with the more positive standard electropotential value will be the cathode. In the next video, we'll look at how to use these values to calculate the cell potential for a reaction.